that shall open our shire, that shall rise all my knees. And Father, I want to praise you. Lord, a heart full of gratitude today because God is still God. Hallelujah. Glory is still glory. Victory is still victory. Healing is still healing. Praise is still praise. Rejoicing is still rejoicing. Love is still love. Jesus is still Jesus. The Holy Ghost is still the Holy Ghost. No matter what happens in this old world. Ha, ha. Oh Lord, I feel yes, sure now. Shut up, shut up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. You can get your blessing right now. You don't have to wait. Go ahead. You've got it. You've got it. Great rejoicing right now. Rejoice because he's, he's alive. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I wonder what it would be like. See, on the day of Pentecost, there was 120. I haven't counted. Don't you take the time to count, but there's probably about that many here right now. But the thing that made the difference is that they were not only in one place. They were in one accord. Hallelujah. Now that means nobody's worried about what, what time service is going to be over. Nobody's worried about what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Or nobody's worried about what happened yesterday. you got one thing in your mind, and that is the glory and the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost is going to fall in this house. Hallelujah. They were there to carry it till the Holy Ghost fell. I feel the glory of God here. I feel an awesome presence of God here this afternoon. An awesome presence. When you leave this service today, you're going to say it's good to be here. Hallelujah. You're not going to forget this service. You're going to be blessed. Glory to God. There's just only two or three of you that's not here yet, so you come on and we'll just rejoice. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift your hands one more time and thank you. Thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. All oh, glory. Yes, I praise you. Thank you for your prayer. Angels, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, angels, you're all over the house. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hey, glory. Holy Ghost, I'm glad you're here. Jesus, I'm glad you're walking these aisles. Glory, 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 glory. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, the Spirit of the Lord would speak unto thee, whosoever hath the ear to hear what the Spirit would say unto the people now. I am the Lord thy God. I am the one, yea, that holds thee in the palm of my right hand. It is I, saith the Lord, that knows the walk that thou takest. It is I that will make the way before thy face. It is I that will cause the enemy to fall before thy face. It is I that will cause you to lift up my name in glory. And the Lord saith unto thee now, if you without fear or favor will lift both hands toward heaven and praise me with a loud voice, I will bless thee now abundantly, saith the Lord. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. tell you more about that later and I'm glad to see all this bread because Jesus said I am the bread hallelujah so you're going to be blessed and just before I get into the to the bread service and that part of it it's going to be a highlight of the service I want to uh, tell you something that God spoke to me one time and I'm sure 
that the prophet can, can bear witness to what I'm saying. I would have services and see all kind of miracles. And yet there were some people that didn't seem to get what I had hoped they would get. I prayed for some people that didn't get healed. I've seen some come in crippled and leave crippled. I've seen some come in blind and leave blind. But I've seen a multitude come in that didn't get up out of a wheelchair. Amen. And I've seen a multitude that did get their blinded eye open and their deaf ears unstopped. I've seen all kinds of miracles, you name it, and I have seen it in 69 years. Besides working with some of the greatest men of faith ever to walk the face of this earth, I thank God I was privileged to stand on their shoulders and see it for myself. Hallelujah. But I was concerned about that, and so I, I just asked the man that knows. I said, Lord, why is it that some people don't get their healing? He said, son, don't you know the same thing perplexed the apostles? I said, tell me about it, Lord. He said, there was a blind man. Everybody had prayed for him. The apostles had prayed for him. No, nobody had been able to get victory for that man. So finally, the question was asked, Lord, who sinned? Did this man sin or did his parents sin? Something caused him to be blind. And Jesus said, neither. He didn't sin, nor his parents didn't sin. That's not why his, he's blind. He's blind because, <laughs> look out. <laughs> because the Son of God wanted to get some glory at a certain point. Hallelujah. The only reason that man is blind is because the Son of God is going to be glorified in this when he's healed. I knew Jack Cole well enough to know that he would go to a great service under that big gospel tent. He too had a gospel tent as big as a bigger than a football field. That's a big tent. I see thousands just packing, jamming there. And he would preach and pray for the sick and see all kinds of miracles. But there would be somebody that didn't get it. They didn't get their healing. And that would frustrate Jack. And Pastor, he would go home and he would weep. He would cry. Jack Cole. He was, he was a great big man. He weighed about 350, 400 pounds. Big man. And it seemed kind of uncanny to see this big man from way up here on the stage with all the miracles and now down like a little baby crying. But listen to what the man was saying. He said, God, I don't understand faith. He said, that woman over there you healed. The one I, I thought she was going to heal said you didn't heal her. What's wrong, God? <laughs> and then sometimes God will speak in a still small voice and say, Jack, it's my reason and my purpose. Amen. You don't know the whole story, but that the Son of God might be glorified, I have, I have reserved that healing. Saints, the Son of God wants to be glorified. And He gets glory out of your victory. He gets glory out of you being healed. He gets glory out of you praising Him. He gets glory out of you being saved. But sometimes your deliverance is delayed. Amen. But I want to mention a couple of things why some people don't get healed. This will bless you. Anybody that dries up and gets a bath. Say amen. amen. Glory to God. The only reason that Bartimaeus got his healing was because he defied public opinion. Some people don't get healed because they live. Catch this. This is worth writing down and remembering. All you preachers are getting this one. They live under the shadow of other people's opinions. Yes. And if Brian Bartimaeus had been living under the shadow of other people's opinions, he would have never got his healing. Right. Some people are healed. It's because they cow down to, well, somebody might not like it. I don't want to rock the boat. Right. But when this man of God heard the commotion and he knew <laughs> Perhaps he said, what's happening? And he got the best news of his life. 
They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing this way. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus of Nazareth is passing this way today. Hallelujah. The door is going to be open. Somebody's going to get this. Somebody. I never felt more anointing in my life than I feel right now. Somebody's going to get it. <laughs> Shut up, Bartimaeus. Public opinion is against you. This is a, a devout man of God. Don't be screaming and hollering, acting like that. You see, they wasn't the one that was blind. Tell him. He defied public opinion and the Bible said. I say the Bible said. He cried all the more. He got louder. He got more determined. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Honey, you need to defy if I public opinion enough to stand up and say, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm going to get what God said I can have. Hallelujah. If I say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Oh, the devil hates that. <laughs> the Bible said, Jesus stood still. He heard the cry. I'm telling you something. There is a way that you can move God off of his throne. You will not do it with a timid, backward, afraid, cowed down. No man has ever been a success that lived under the shadow of other people's opinions. A man or a woman that does that will never do anything in this life worth doing. Some of the bravest people I know are preachers. you got to be brave to do what we do. That's why God gave it the Holy Ghost. He said, because this will give you unction. I call it the unction to function. Saints, you're going to be blessed today. Hallelujah. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. <laughs> Somebody say power. 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 Nothing will thrill my heart more than to see somebody just, just come out. Your, your, your average, ordinary personality was to be reserved and quiet, not moving much. But see, you have a need. You had it 10 years ago. You still got it now. Yes. Still there. But the very day that you come out of there, hallelujah, say, give up, that's enough. I want what God said I can have. Hallelujah. Go ahead and shout and praise God. Amen. Praise God. Oh, yeah. Now, all of a sudden, Jesus stood still. Bartimaeus stood up. And the Bible said, he took off that coat. That was a beggar's coat he was wearing. And the Bible took the time to tell you that he, he left his coat. Because inside he said, this is it. I'm not going to need that anymore. I'm not going to need that blind man's coat anymore. This is it. Because Jesus of Nazareth is calling me. Hallelujah. Strangest question in the world. Jesus, why? What, what do you want me to do? What would thou that I should do unto thee? Now, the apostle drew his blind, the boat of two drew his blind, Bartimaeus drew his blind. What in the world? Jesus asked him a question like that. Jesus could see he was blind. <laughs> Raise your hand if you want the answer. Come on. Why, why, why? Why did he ask him that question? Because he wanted him. To make a declaration. Amen. He wanted him. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. You get it. You get it. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. He wanted him to declare himself. Amen. Some people pray on him on prayer for But he wanted him to get specific. There's a better way of saying it. Jesus wanted blind Bartimaeus to get specific. Uh -huh. I can 
hear some people pray, oh God, bless me, I'm up, bless me, I'm up. Lord, bless my sons and bless my daughters, oh Lord. Last he hadn't even feel, feeling good, bless her. Yes. You, know, you know why God don't hear those prayers? Because you're not specific. Why don't you just one time in your life? specific with God. Say, God, I have cowed down to public opinion. I've worried about what my neighbors might think, yes. what my family might think. Yes. And I'm in church. And I, honey, this is one church. You don't have to worry about disturbing nobody. All you got to do is just get happy and somebody get happy with you. Hallelujah. So, he got so I didn't say specific. I said specific. God, do me a favor. Hit your neighbor like this on shoulder. That old man's talking to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people don't get their healing because they don't get specific with God. So what did he do, Bartimaeus? What would thou that I should do unto thee? Then he got specific. He said, Lord. That I might receive my sight. Yes. That's what. That's what. And not after a while, or next month, but right now. Glory to God. Blind Bartimaeus received his sight. Praise God. tell you about this church I was pastoring. I had people just like people here that uh, had all kinds of problems and troubles. But there was one moment in, in the church that we were all referred to as grandma. That's all somebody even knew about. She was elderly and she was crippled. She had rheumatoid arthritis. Her little knuckles was swelled up and her, her feet were twisted around. She had hammer toes and she was old and couldn't hardly walk. I was going to bless somebody. Her husband's name was Harold. And every Sunday morning, Grandma was always there. But she had a problem. She was a chronic complainer and fault finder. She'd say, Harold. And he'd say, yes, dear. Help me in the church. And then she'd start down the aisle. And if anybody said, Grandma, how you doing? She'd say, what do you mean, how am I doing? You know anybody in worse shape now I'm in? I'm hurting all over. That's how I'm doing. <laughs> and not only that, she was louder than I was when I tried to preach. I could hear her now. I'd get her anointed and start to preach. And she'd say, Harold! She didn't need a microphone. She was louder than me. <laughs> I could still hear Harold today. God knows he's got stars in his crown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. It's too loud in here. Can't you make me a little quieter? Making me nervous. This went on for two or three months. Yes, dear. It's too hot in here. Make them turn it down. Or it's too cold. Can't somebody do something about it? <laughs> so she got more attention than I got. So one Saturday night I prayed, Pastor. I said, God, I'm not a complainer, but me or Grandma One's going to have to go. <laughs> I said, God, you got to give me an answer. I was perplexed over this one. You can figure things out, but this one had me. Because we loved her. How many understand that? We, we loved her. And I said, you got to give me an answer. I said, one of us is going to have to go. She's louder than I am. She takes over every service. So God said to me, and I love, I love God for this, because God gets specific. He said, you preach on there's healing in praise. Now, Man, I got my subject ready. 
And I started preaching that healing and praise. All of a sudden, a man sat on the front row. And everything was wrong with him on the right side. His right eye was blind. His right ear was deaf. And he was born with no kneecap on the right leg. His right leg was totally stiff. And the service went on. I said, there's healing and praise. And he got up as best he could on the one side, holding on, and he began to praise. Hallelujah! Glory! Thank you, Jesus! Praise God! All of a sudden, God put a new kneecap. <laughs> and that blinded eye opened, and that deaf ear on stop, and everybody in church was shouting all over the place, except guess who? <laughs> she said, Hannah! Yes, dear. Too much commotion. I can't stand this racket. Do something. <laughs> I went over to her. You know the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. Yes. The Holy Ghost is not abrupt. And, oh, hallelujah. There's ways to handle things and still be sweet. So I, I held the microphone behind him. I said, Grandma. She said, ah. <laughs> I said, God said to tell you if you quit that complaining and start praising Him, He would heal you this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Service went on a few minutes. Went back to her again. Same response. The third time, I made up my mind. Because God had told me what to preach on. I just stood in front of her. Everybody else is still shouting praising God. They're not noticing me now. They're, they're rejoicing with the man that got the miracle See. <laughs> I said, Grandma, don't just sit there and complain. I said, God said if you would praise Him, He would heal you. Amen. And she said, do you mean that? I said, I never meant anything so much in my life. We had to get the victory over this. <laughs> so she said, come on, Harold, help me to my feet. <laughs> so he got his hands on her elbow, helped Grandma to her feet. And still, I said, now don't just stand there, Grandma. God said, praise Him. Amen. And I wouldn't take my eyes off of her, so she was in trap. She was trapped now. <laughs> so she said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> and when she said it, a finger went straight and a knot disappeared. And she said, oh, hell, look at that. <laughs> and then she said hallelujah and another finger was straight then she said glory to God her hand went straight hallelujah she kept on praising and glorifying God and pretty soon she was out in the middle of the aisle hallelujah glory praising God some people will never get their healing because they're too sick and proud or cowed down to praise God thank God I'm in a church that will let us praise the Lord hallelujah